Recording. 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 Oh, oh my. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Sober School Podcast. My name is Jake Howard. Recording. Recording. Oh. He didn't want to switch. Uh, we'll do it again. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> I go by DJ Swirl. Chocolate and vanilla swirl. It's the first show of the year. We gotta have, we gotta have a couple of these. A little stankiness. A little stank to it. Before we get started, let me give a shout out to Royalty Nutrition. And to help me out with that always, here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Warhorse. Hey, it's Warhorse. Do you want your workouts to look like this? Or do you want your workouts to slay? When Warhorse picks his pre-workout, he wants it to slay. If you want second place, go with somebody else. If you want to be a champion, go with Royalty Nutrition. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, Royalty Nutrition is a veteran-owned and operated supplement company that doesn't automatically use the cheapest ingredients possible while making their supplements for you. Check them out and use the discount code 37HAKE to save you 15% on your entire order. My next shout-out of the evening will be to Gorilla Gains. That's gorilla-gains with a Z dot com. They are a fitness apparel company that you can wear comfortably in and out of the gym. They also make great equipment that helps keep you safe while you train. Check them out and use the discount code JAKE15 to save you 15% on that entire order as well. Uh, shout out to me, patreon.com backslash Hake Jower. You can check it up there. I have training logs, blog entry posts, and my once a month solo show, Hake Rants. Check it out and support me and we'll get better stuff. <laughs> <laughs> DJ Swirl, tell them about that buy to buy empire. They say teamwork makes the dream work, but what about the nightmare? From your landlord to your dashboard, sometimes life don't play fair. If you lack time, got a bad spine, we're here to support you. Giving peace of mind from the time you buy until we say goodbye. Six zero oh, two three four five zero four seven two buy two buy. Six zero oh, two three four five zero four seven two buy two buy. That's right, buy to buy. We specialize in fast, friendly, on-demand moving, delivery, staging, TV mounting, and assembly. When it comes to the world of rather not anomics, would you rather DIY it yourself or would you rather hire a professional? to do it for you well the first time and then do whatever you please. That is what buy to buy is at B-U-Y-T-O-B-Y-E. What you see here is an extension of buy to buy This is buy to buy studios. We are creative consulting and content creation, helping boutique brands boost their presence online from simple posts, reels, and stories to full fledged podcasts and live streaming. What you see here, we are creativity customized, providing high quality, low stress, and always remote controlled. Hit us up everywhere you are at buy to buy studios or at buy to buy.com forward slash studios. Jake the Snake, what are we talking about tonight? Well, I want to touch on, we might have to look for a new uh, royalty nutrition intro. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Warhorse is changing it up on us. Okay. I suggest uh, check his uh, social medias out. That's at JP Warhorse <laughs> and check out the new. New and improved war horse. Gotcha. Um, also, um, obviously, we didn't meet our goal of 2023 of getting Kylie Ray or uh, Dustin Runnels on the show. True. But Kylie Ray acknowledged just again she did. <laughs> and what was the um, what was the circumstances this time? So I saw uh, she had recently um, she recently gave birth. So her and uh, her husband, I think, is there, I think, yeah, they're married. Jeez. Um, they just had a kid, and she was taking a picture in the gym of her being all, um, you know, not too bad, two months postpartum, you know, learning to, you know, love myself through this kind of, you know, 
proper positivity, just had a baby stuff. Yep. And I said, talk to us on the show about it. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. so I know you see us. We're not bad guys. We just want to have a conversation about sobriety and parenting, AKA what we talk about every damn week on this thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, and you're, you're in the gym. I'm also in gym. No, nope, no doubt. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what was it? What happened last time? Why, why did we bring her up last time? Um, she had, did she this just is before we had this before we had Lou on. Okay. And it was because she had just said something about her year of sobriety. I was like, come on the show. And she was like, yep. Mm hmm. So something similar, a big, a, a big life event. What do you know? Yep. So, <laughs> I was, you see us. <laughs> I posted you when you mentioned it. Um, I posted that, you know, that that's something that my wife, she might actually watch the show. So yeah, I don't know how much my wife has ever seen of the show. Um, but I know it's not much and, but I know that she and many women struggle postpartum. And so, mm-hmm whether that's just like you said, accepting their body and you know, the, the changes. Um, Cause she jokingly said something to me today. She was like, I did a workout today and I didn't pee my pants a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and that's like a regular, regular post kids. So, you know, yep. as, as the man, I know that that's not something that we have to deal with. So nothing but respect and admiration for them simply having to deal with it. So the fact that, you know, she's public about her her situation and, and her struggles, you know, I would like to have her on for the sake of other women um, to hear someone from her position, um, you know, saying with all of the the struggles that she deals with being feminine in a masculine space by her profession, like... Mm-hmm talk about not being the the best place to get sympathy <laughs> for those struggles you know what i mean mm-hmm. so, while sure there are women wrestlers and and all of that it's a male dominated sport so um i can well, have- i know i know there was some drama involving her in a very tenured big name in the wrestling business that popped off I'm not going to dig into that because no facts have come out officially yet. So, but I have a feeling that she's going to be like, you guys just want to talk about that. Like, no, <laughs> I have, I have no idea what you're talking about. So you'll have to, you'll have to give me more details after. Well, I'll fill you on, I'll fill you in offline. Yeah. Well, let me remember. Cause like that, like I didn't even, that's not even a hidden agenda. I don't even, I don't know. Mm-hmm. So, um, but yeah, like you said, without the facts or without being able to be factual about it, it would just be gossiping. So, uh, I try not to do that. So mm-hmm. understood. How was Christmas? Holidays were good, man. Um, kept it low key, uh, stayed at the house, um, had the in-laws over and, you know, ate too much and exchanged gifts. Um, I got a, had a white elephant, exchange with my BNI East Valley entrepreneur group. And we, uh, met up at this local coffee spot whose name escapes me currently, but, um, we all met and we, you know, exchanged gifts and, uh, I wound up getting a Lotus car Lego set. And so I got it for my daughter, my oldest, because she's really into Legos right now. And so, um, it's Lego Lego, excuse me, really into Lego right now. Plural Lego. Yeah. Plural and singular. Thank you for the firmware update. Uh, so yes, she's really into Lego right now. And, um, so I figured why not? She loved it, started building it and it's tough. It's fucking tough. And so, Mm -hmm. uh, she kind of strayed away from it and hadn't touched it. And so I was like, where's your car at? Oh yeah, 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 and so, and she just dropped it and went and she was on our tablet or something. And so I went and got it, and then I started building it. She goes, "You want to help me do that?" 
I said, pardon you, <laughs> but you can help me finish this. And so, but yeah, we helped, we put it together and it's, it was, it's dope, man. Lego have come a long way since I was really, really into them. So, um, but it's cool to see them into it. And so, um, I've been trying to find ways to bond more with my youngest daughter because my oldest is a spitting image of me, but my youngest is pretty, pretty princess. And so, um, I got them, or pardon me, Santa brought them um, the Barbie, no, not Barbie, the Disney Princess Lego Castle. And so it's got five princesses from you know Ariel, uh, Rapunzel, some of the other ones, Snow White, I think is one of them. And uh, they've all got their little piece of the castle. And so you build them all separately, and then they all link together, and it makes one grand castle. And so... I got to build that with them uh, New Year's Eve um, while we were watching the festivities and, you know, trying to keep them up because my youngest, man, she'll crash at 7.15 if you let her. Uh, she's past the point of taking naps, but she goes to bed. So, <laughs> so it was a struggle. And so I wanted to make sure that they had something to keep them occupied. And it worked. And we got it done. And it's really cool. Um, again, Lego have come a long way. And so the fact they were Disney princesses, she plays with it every day now. Every day she puts it on. And so it's really cool. I got to bond with her over that. And then, um, you know, just exchanging gifts. Uh, we had COVID in the house. COVID made an appearance. Ooh. And so uh, both girls had it. My wife did not get it. I still have not gotten it. And so um, they got a mild case, had symptoms. And by the time they really were sick to where they po t tested positive, they probably had already had it for a few days. And so it yeah. um, wasn't really any on time more than a day, um, but they've recovered. My wife got both an upper respiratory and sinus infection at the same damn time. So she's still recovering from that, and she got that. The worst of it, it really started on Christmas Day. So uh, to answer your question. Merry Christmas. Yeah, long-winded fashion uh, to answer your question. She was sick. And so um, after they had COVID and then she got sick, but it wasn't COVID, um, you know, and it's known that teachers, given they're all exhausting themselves toward the end of, you know, or before break, once the break hits and they finally get their body relaxed, they usually get sick in some fashion. So she was expecting it, but it's still not fun. And so um, she's had a lingering cough that has come back up today after subsiding for most of the day yesterday. So she's still going through it. And her birthday is in two days. So um, we plan on going having a spa day and Manny Petty reflexology. I'm looking forward to that for sure. So do that as a date for her birthday. And then um, that was my holidays week. How about you? It was loud. <laughs> All the kids. Um, in the yeah. We had everybody here, which was awesome. Um, Obviously, uh, Christmas is a bigger deal for everybody else except me. So, <laughs> um, but uh, festivities were had. Um, How much stuff did you have to build? You know what? Um, not a lot. And there was one tent that Britt built. Didn't even ask. She just went and put it together. So, nice. more power to her. What? Yeah. And then, Wrong one. Ooh. There it is. Yeah, and then the girls have already like wrecked it. <laughs> um, they got these little like princess outfits, and they wore those until they broke all of that and lost the jewelry and stuff. Yeah, as per tradition, I think everybody got everything or something that they wanted and they really enjoy. I was really excited about my uh, 35 pound dumbbells that I, that I got for Christmas. And, uh, I got uh, some soap and deodorant and all kinds of fun, good smelling stuff. Yeah. And some, uh, some beard cream, which is nice. Um, I got Brit some 15 pound dumb dumbbells. Um, Christina Pajitsky's perfect red lipstick. 
some stickers and stuff and then uh, yeah man. so we talked Christmas was good we talked a week or so ago um about uh the wish slash donation list and so and talking about having uh presence over presence mm -hmm. and um so yeah ko and i really didn't get much for one another aside from you know smaller things that we wanted but yeah us like i said the day date is us really spending time and money on each other um to just enjoy each other's company outside of the craziness that you know when you have a house full of kids and a lot going on and um but yeah, her the fact that her birthday is so close to the holidays, it's like it kind of gets mulled in on top of the fact that mom's celebrated as much outside of Mother Day's, Mother's Day um, specifically. So uh, just good to make sure that she has some time away from the girls and to decompress and coming up off of this illness to really give her a boost heading back into the school week. Fun and exciting school week. Fun and exciting. So, so you had a uh, real hardcore uh, New Year's Eve too. Uh, yeah, hardcore up until ten to see the ball drop on the East Coast, and then complained about the fireworks going on outside for no reason, and then promptly passed out. <laughs> To get up on New Year's Day and go out and scoot, scoot at four thirty in the morning. Hell yeah, so. scoot, scooting. No, so I worked till you know ten. Ten p.m. New Year's Eve. Ten p. Ten p.m. New Year's Eve. Gotcha. Then I came home, wrote programs because it was you know Sunday. I finished my training programs on Sunday. And then fireworks went off until about two in the morning. So as the trashiest house on the block, how does it feel knowing that you are not one of the disruptors? I mean, we really should be one of the disruptors. Since we are the uh, trashiest house, not in the block, in the neighborhood. In the whole neighborhood, man. In the whole of Johnson Ranch. We are just scum. Scum. <laughs> But not bottom of the but not foot. polluting noise wise. Yeah. At least any longer. Oh yeah, I I, uh, I killed a chicken on Christmas. <sighs> Talk Christmas about Day. Lead. <laughs> Christmas well, Day. Um yeah. What time? Oh probably ten or so in the morning. Oh, okay, so you guys had already opened presents. Yeah. And then you took a soul. Breakfast was already had. You know, you can't be killing on an empty stomach. <laughs> Fair. Yeah, so, I mean, I just, and just, I just like, looked at Brit. Casually? I just looked at Brit, I just looked at Brit and I was like, I can't. I can't with this. We can't have a rooster. I got I to gotta go kill this rooster. She goes, well, what are you going to do? It can't be too, anything too crazy. The girls have seen you killed too many animals already. And I was like, oh, I'll just pick him up and I'll just break his neck. It'll be quick and done. So I went out and I caught this rooster. <laughs> and apparently how I grabbed him, I cut off his blood supply to his brain. And he pretty much passed out immediately. <laughs> so I was like, I guess I'll just hold him. <laughs> Just, I mean, so how I grabbed him, he just, <laughs> and so. What's that move called? And that isn't there a name for that? Well, like, I, it'd be like the it'd be like the same for a rear naked choke. Okay. So you yeah. Just, like, you just choked a chicken. Oh. I choked a chicken. Yep. Choking oh. chickens on Christmas Day, baby. Just like Jesus would do. Yeah, just like Jesus. Choking. <laughs> okay, so did you do that in the presence of your kids? No. Is that a gift? No, I tried to like I tried to like get out there quick and in a hurry so they wouldn't like see. 
So, yeah. I mean, if someone was looking through the window, they're looking through the window. But... So, did you have fried chicken? No, no. He's too small. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's just loud. It was it was one of those things. It was like, well, maybe he'll just be a quiet one. It doesn't. How do you dispose of a dead chicken? You just put him in a trash bag and throw him in the trash. Oh man, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's Mom, the- I'm not gonna di- I'm not gonna dig a hole and have a whole ceremony just so one hey. of the dogs can dig dig it back up. <laughs> People have done stranger things. Well, so like we, there was a chick that we had that Ruth unintentionally murdered. (laughs) Cause like when we had them in like the brooding box, it was always like, you can't touch the chicks unless um, mom or dad or one of the big kids is with you because we we don't want you to accidentally hurt the bird. Right. Right. And so this happened when I was, I was out doing something, but I came back in and there was a commotion. I guess Ruthie had went and grabbed this. It was just a tiny little chick. It was cute. It was, it was like silver colored. It was real cool looking. And uh, I love this little thing. So it was like sweet. So I was it was like fit like, it's like that big. Yeah. And uh, it's just real sweet little, little chick. And uh, I guess Ruthie had, grabbed this little chick and then uh, either one of the big kids, either one of the big kids or Britt had said, go put that, go put that bird down. And she went, and the thing landed on its head yep. and then didn't die right away. So basically had to like brain trauma itself into like letting its heart stop pretty much. So that was sad, but uh, didn't, didn't, the last time you, <laughs> the last time you were the Undertaker, it didn't go well, right? Oh, the the rooster that would not die. Yeah, yeah dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, just making sure. Well, no, no, no. That was the first time. The oh. second time, the second time was real quick and easy. Okay. So, so I just walked out and shot it. <laughs> so not all. Oh. So rear naked choke is as effective. Yeah, as a. 22. No fried chicken then either, right? No. <laughs> you see, no you, so I was telling uh, the people where the chicken farm's at, it's like, you need to find a home for this chicken. This is a rare bird. He's pretty. You could probably get $100 for this bird. And then she just never did, never did it. And this, and this thing was like tearing hens apart. It was just a little fucker. So I said, okay, I'm coming out and I'm just going to shoot it. Because he's too fast. I couldn't catch him. There's no way. <laughs> so uh, I'll, sw- I'll walk up and wait for him to stop the cockle doodle doo and I'll, I'll blow his lungs out, which I did. <laughs> yeah, man, that yeah. Life, life is not for me. Not for me. Green Acres is the place for me. Place to be. Farm living is the life. Not for me. Speaking of farm living, uh, what's the update on your defensive driving class? Oh, I did it. I did it. I did it. It's all completed. All done. No mas. All done. Yeah, yeah, buddy. Yeah. It was a good thing. It was a good thing I was reminded to do it by uh, the missus because uh, when I went to do my application, it was like, you have nine days before you – your court date so essentially you have like a day to do this shoot yep. <laughs> so how long did it take oh it did, i did it eight hours solid yeah yeah because like it won't it won't let you move on even when you're done like you have to be on the page for a certain set amount of time before you can move on to the quiz yep yeah Fun, fun. It was, it was just happy, good times. Yep. Do you pass with flying colors? Just make the. Color. Oh yeah, well, well, you have to, you have to get a hundred percent on all of the quizzes. Okay. You have to start over. Got you. 
I don't, like, um, I don't remember when I took it. I failed one page because I wasn't paying attention. I was watching a movie or something in the background. Mm-hmm. And it was like, you you must start over. I was like, okay. And I just turned everything off and put some music, like some mm-hmm. uh, orchestra music on, something that just gave me all focus. <laughs> Got through it, no problem. But yeah, that was a long time ago. Yeah. No, I, I killed it. One shot. So did this remove it from your record? Yeah, it should. Okay. Good. Because I'm not a criminal. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for the hookup, Deputy Frank Slope. You're the best. <laughs> Our freaking SOB. Just a just him and his Hot Wheel out there getting people on empty roads. Just a real stand-up guy. So you worked New Year's Eve. I worked Christmas Eve. Um, <laughs> Or Christmas Eve to game the realtor in our um, BNI East Valley Entrepreneurs Group. He uh, wanted to surprise his kids with a trampoline. They just had a newborn um, a week prior, maybe, and so have two older kids and needed them occupied. And so my girls, eight and five, both still use a trampoline. Heck yeah. Basically every day. And so this one, uh, and this is like the one that my my girls use is a 14-footer, and it's maybe mid-level. This one is a 15-footer, and it is nice quality. And so it has 106 springs that you must start north, south, east, west, Rotate north, south, east, west. Rotate north, south. You know, so you get it like a tire, right? You put it on in a certain way. So, hundred and six of those mugs, and so I did it behind their shed, so that way their kids didn't see it being put together. So that way, Christmas morning they could walk out and instantly enjoy it. So yeah, there's trampoline up there. Yeah, they were like, "Is somebody here?" And they're like, "No, nobody's here. Nobody's here." So I was back there, like. And the poles are all six feet long, so I'm over there trying to be, first of all, not too noisy with large aluminum poles. <laughs> and then... Uh, ding, ding, ding. Exactly. And then um, it had rained that night prior, so it was still, like, a little bit muddy, like, you know, loose ground back there. And, man, it was uh, it was nice and cool, but not... I had direct sunlight on me, so I was hot still. <laughs> But uh, knocked it out in two, two and a half hours, something like that. And so, yeah, got it done. And they were, they left 15, 20 minutes after I started. And so he's like, yeah, I'm going to take the kids. We're going to go do something. Um, And then I was like, all right, I'll let you know when I'm done. And so I got it all done, net up everything. And they were just going to move it. And so I didn't actually put the, they had like these long, stakes that you put in the ground just for additional support. And so I didn't put those in, but because they were going to move it again, but yeah, hit them up. I was like, Hey, all set. Sent me the Venmo done deal. So I still got to go home. I mean, and he did it. He hit me up at like nine 30, 10 AM. Got this trampoline. I can't put it together. <laughs> Understood, man. And so he's renovating. Not only is his wife, not only are, or do they just have their third child, Mm-hmm. They're renovating their house. Nice. And so they've got, you know, the bare minimum in the main areas. And so they're making do. And so growing their family, updating their space. Of course, they're still business professionals, all of this. And so, yeah, and they got a lot on their plate. So they hit me up. One o'clock, I was there. Two and a half hours, knocked it out, refreshed, went home. Got to hang out with my kids, the family. Still have Christmas, so yeah. Always nice when you can work, make a little money, and and go home and see the fam. Yeah, so definitely. The scooter gig. Um, yeah, what's up with that? Uh, last week, Bird filed for Chapter Eleven bankruptcy. Okay, so that's so it's officially out there in the world. They are now emailing their customer base and letting them know what's going on. So, yeah, it's an official, official. and But it was only for the U.S. bird brand. Their Canadian and European brands are unfazed. So 
Um, all is well and good in all three areas, but they are just consolidating their resources and streamlining their process to get rid, basically trimming the fat, right? They weren't operating optimally and they have to make changes in order to protect the business and your business model. Ask Trump. Bankruptcy is part of the game plan. So um, they're doing that and um, it's all with the government's blessing. And so, um, but operations have continued as normal. Um, but it is a, it has been a rough transition. And so um, I've gone the last two days and uh, taking care of swaps. I'm going again tomorrow morning. Then I got a gig. I got two gigs after that. And then, um, but yeah, they're, they shrank their, um, their fleet from 1200 to 400 and only in Phoenix. And so there's a lot, a lot of moving parts. And then with the bankruptcy it's just adding more fuel to the fire. So, um, new year, new opportunities. And so, um, it's going, it's not nearly as effective as I would like it to be. And, Excuse me, there are changes going on internally, excuse me, with consistency that is adding to the lack of uh I guess it's just consistency on both ends. Nothing has been consistent since I, since I started this. Not the leadership, not any of it. So you can't I mean there was a there was a purchase and then a bankruptcy. So <laughs> those are two major things in the world of business. And so Mm -hmm. uh, being a third party operator on the on the tail end of that, not even being directly affiliated with Bird yet. That's something that is up to them. And so, um, but they bought Spin. And so my contract is with Spin. So if I ex operate exclusively with them exclusively with them, so be it. If I branch out and assist Bird too, so be it. But you know, just positioning myself to be able to take on that work and add micro mobility to my portfolio so um learning a lot i've gotten it down to a science man i'm knocking these things out 15 to 20 an hour and i just adjusted my workflow again so that way my bike is loaded and ready to go so that way all i have to do is put batteries in it and take off and i got nearly 40 units taken care of in two and a half hours and so yeah. Like I'm humming, bro. Like, and the only reason why I stopped is because I ran out of batteries. And so, like, being able to position myself to copy and paste this with Bird, and then with uh, Spin, up to uh, you know, releasing more units, heading into the busy season. So the winter time is usually when it goes down. School's out. School will be back in soon. Weather will be changing, and so. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see where things are four months from now. But in the right direction. Sounds like you're rocking and rolling. Booting and scooting. <gasps> That's my thing. And boogieing. I'm jamming on this thing every day, dude. I'm jamming. <laughs> jamming. Man. I have not done any time in the gym since December 27th. Okay. And you were on a roll there for a while. Well, yeah. It's, it's, I'm at minimum four days a week. Okay. And why have you not worked out? So I had a pretty hard day at the office, at the Humble gig, just because, I mean, it involved me moving a lot of heavy stuff. And so I was like, I'll take this off from the gym. I'll use this. I'll recover. And then, um, then I had a day where I was, I unloaded a truck the whole time I was there. Then I did a job where it was 
I didn't know it was a two-person job until I was doing it. So I beasted it out, <clears throat> and strained my abs and my back. <laughs> and, in, and then, so I was like, okay, obviously I'm gonna need to chill from that. But then I still go back and I'm still unloading trucks and I'm still moving stuff. And so today I proceeded to do as much nothing as possible. This is my, uh, my day off. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm. Uh, <clears throat> I am recovering from being being uh, a strong man at the at the gig. That's tough, man. Yeah, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, I, I'm still going into work. I'm trying not to, you know, bitch and moan too much. But I I bought a brand new back brace that I will be wearing. <laughs> Right now, while I'm there, <laughs> right now, right now, yep. Uh, Came today. Uh, we had a conversation about mine not too long ago, right? Yep. You said you needed to get one. No, I said my grandma told me I should get one, and I said oh. I'm fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. You know what? <laughs> so did you call her and say you were right, Grandma? No, I have not. not oh, you better do that. No, today ended up being funky at the house. I didn't have time to call Grandma. Sure. Well, Granny, you've got a phone call coming. Oh, she does. You were right. I was wrong. You were smart. I'm dumb. You know, just the regular stuff. Regular, regular, regular stuff. Um, both of my grandmas are awesome. <laughs> they I miss them. I miss my grandmas. Yeah, so, all right. So, with business and things and the show, what would you like to accomplish in this, the year of 2024? Um, I had something written down. Apparently my... Apparently my iCloud didn't update, so it didn't come through. But um, I remember writing something down the effect of just trying to find balance just trying to find the balance between the effort you put into something and the output you receive from it so um whether that's with the business business or with, with extra stuff like this or um something i'm in the very beginning stages of working with another confidant who is one of the people who I typically sp communicate with through memes. <laughs> it's one of those situations where you just send memes back and forth and that's the main way that you talk. Um, but we've actually been uh, in the, uh, the simulator working on uh, my golf game and uh, just getting small tips and, and, you know, in the course of playing and, doing whatever it's like you know there is an there's an exchange of just ideas and you know just passions and just talking about the kind of stuff that you're really into and what you would always like to do and one of the things that my buddy likes to do is golf and he's decent at it and so he's he would love an opportunity to be able to share his experience and, and his tips like he has with me and um, I went out and uh, got to play 14 holes today. My buddy Dustin, um, we went and got really cheap. We got a Groupon deal at Ken McDonald in Tempe and went and played. And I shot the most consistent golf I've played in a very long time. Um, I didn't, I because the simulator by default uh, putts for you, I haven't been putting just for the sake of workflow um, and didn't show, did not show. Um, and so I attribute a lot of that to the time that we've put in. And if that's something that he wants to pursue or he would like to, even as a side hustle, everybody's got a side hustle today, right? Mm -hmm. Whether that's a humble gig or that's just 
something you do because you're good at it. Golf is something that he's good at. And so he volunteered information to me that other people would charge for. And I'm like, have you considered charging people for this? Oh, you know, I've thought about it. There's a few people that, you know, have expressed it to me or whatever. I'm like, bro, you're a problem every time I play with you. Like, <laughs> you're good. I, I, when people talk about who you know that's good at golf, your name pops up. And so it's like, if you want to try and use the space that I have at the simulator to try and bring the people that you know on and to be able to do it in a capacity that's fun, that's private, it's laid back, and you get to make a little money on the side from it, why not? Okay, cool. Let's talk about it. So we've begun the stages of talking about it and um, trying to figure out ways to to convey that and find out who wants to, who shoots in like, you know, 80, 90, hundreds and has always thought about seeing someone or, or getting lessons, but you don't want to go to a stuffy golf course or to, you know, the PGA, you don't want to in, inconvenience yourself and go all the way to a PGA tour store or whatever you have to do in order to do that. You can go to a local indoor simulator. Don't have to worry about the weather or losing daylight like I did. This place is a 24-hour facility. So if someone wants to go in at 3 in the morning, that could happen. So, you know, just trying to troubleshoot and, and figure out unique ways to find a little micro niche and to make a little money on the side, doing the thing you love that, oh, is going to make you better while you do it. Yeah! <laughs> so, yeah, just little things like that, you know, um, just trying to find creative ways to extend what we're doing here into different avenues and golf is something I'm already passionate about myself. So it's a vetted interest on my end. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. How about you, sir? Oh, <laughs> shit, man. <laughs> this used to be easy when I was a dreamer. Um, what does that mean? Used to be. What's that? Oh, it's. I mean, I still have like. You too tired. I would love to. You just. I would love to. I would love to compete this year. I would love to fucking. Uh, I'd love to be coaching full time. I would love to have every dream guest we ever put on the list come on the show. I would love this show to just take off. Period. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm a little down in the dumps this evening, but like <laughs> there's there's no maybe about that. You're Yeah, man. Off your game. Yep, I'm definitely off my game. But even if even with that being the case, you reached out to me. You reached out to me. You could have crawled in a hole. You could have done many other things. But many the, other things. You reached out and you said, "Hey man, you want to talk tonight?" My response, as soon as I got an opportunity to, was, yes, sir. Like, let's go. Because this is more than just all of the things that you just spoke on. You would like for this to jump off. You would like for, you know, to, you, all of those other things that you would like to happen are conditional, and they're conditional based off of your energy level. Mm -hmm. And this is not one of those things. This is you're depleted, you're off your game, and you come into this space and you find reasons for, you find the reasoning within your frustration. And you analyze it. And you troubleshoot. And you do all of, you do, you, you are a grown up, man. You're grown about it. You got, you got static on your end tonight. And other people would have, Use this as an excuse to not talk. Mm -hmm. There's like a there's like a popular meme. It's like all the excuses that black folks use to get off the phone whenever they're talking to somebody. And it's like, oh, a plane just flew over. I'll call you back. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's something super main, mundane, has nothing to do with with the reason why they're on the phone or whatever. They just use it as an excuse to get off. And so, like, you mm -hmm. could have used what is going on with you and why you're not why you're not a hundred percent tonight. You could have used that as an, as a reason to just not talk. Mm -hmm. 
to not only not talk, to not record. Because you were the one who said, let's go. Just run it. Because you understand the value that you get out of this every time. Yep. And so, regardless of how you feel getting off of this, I doubt it's going to be as inflammatory as you were when we first got on here. Yeah, I mean, even looking though, forward to... Even though you're not going back, you're not going back into... <laughs> Even though it's not over, even though you have to, the solution is still pending, but it's like, you well, could, that is an excuse, bro. You didn't. So kudos. Well, John Rambo, it's not over. It's never over. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, man. No, <laughs> your personal life, it's not. There's there are contentious points in your personal life right now that will throw anybody off, and and you're injured, and you're injured, yes, and you're in active recovery, and you have six kids, and, bro. Like I'm tired. It's like like I was joking when when you said it, but I was like, you're too tired to dream. <laughs> <laughs> like when you sleep at night it's just sleep it's just off the light switch goes off in your brain and then when your internal alarm clock goes off or the the buzzer you you assign to your phone whatever the case there's no dreaming there's no energy to explore <laughs> explore your subconscious even your subconscious is tired I feel that man I feel that. I've been taking screenshots. Today is day three of 2024. I have taken screenshots every time I got up off of the bed from my place of rest. It is, and, and gotten out of the house. It has been before 4.30, three days in a row. Yeah! That's a fucking huge victory in my book. Yeah. Personal, don't need to share that. Like, and other people can hear this and or see it, and they could not care. I do that every day. So someone's going to use it as all jobs matter. <laughs> I worked overnight. So <coughs> I save people's lives. <coughs> yes, yes, you do. I'm recalibrating my internal clock, and it's a struggle. I'm 40. I'm trying to teach an old dog a new trick, and it is tough. But for the first three days of this year, I have exceeded my own expectation. So I'll take that to the bank and I'm going to keep screenshotting. So the day that I, I'm outside of the house or I, I'm, it's post 5 a.m., I'll be upset about that. I got started on my first swap was at 518 this morning. Ooh. Downtown Phoenix, 43 degrees outside. So you're asking me, what goals do I have? Keep that shit up. One of my goals is to is to keep testing my own boundaries. Cause the bed, the covers, warm water, all of that sounds so good in the morning. I have to say no to all that shit. And I have to pre pack at night. You know how hard it is sneaking around the ninja? Mm -hmm. Trying to get your clothes together, not make noise? And you it's, have a dog that's at your feet, hoping you're going to play with him. <laughs> like, I've had to do that, and it's not fun. When I'm using my, when I'm using towels to get the frost off my windshield. I'm not complaining, let me be clear. From the Midwest, I'm gracious that it's only frost. That it's not, nope. that it's not snow. But guess what? It's still 4.30 in the morning. That's another thing. I have to figure out a new time to train. Mm. And you've been training at the same time frame for how long? Well, it's like I try and get up at 4. And then I'm out in the, I'm out in the garage by like 4.15 at the latest. Yep. And then done by 5.30. How, well, how insulated is your garage? Not well. Yeah. Mine isn't even. It's better, it's better than nothing. Yep. But Same. Ruth is up at four. 
Jeez knows how to turn the TV on without a remote. Yes. And to find the Teletubbies channel. And if you aren't down there watching her, Ooh. she's eating chocolate chips and sugar and all kinds of shit. So actually today, Britt went out and bought a no shit door lock that you have to put in the, like the key code in. For the, for the pantry? For the pantry. Yes. <laughs> Ruth is going to be pissed. Oh, she watched her do it. Oh, no. What are you doing? No, but like, she, doesn't know the, she doesn't know the code. But like, sure. but like. Now. And that's the thing, too. It's like she's. She's so smart. And it's like, well, if I can't do that, I can still do this. I'm going to do that instead. And then it's like, I have no clue how to teach her to just stop doing shit you're not supposed to just because you want to do it. I have no clue. Well, you know what that feels like, though. She gets that from you. Yeah. So you know yeah, what she does. So, so it's like the old, the old cliche. You can never know what love is until you know it, until you felt hate. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, you can love somebody, but if you've never felt what it feels like to be hated or to just hate someone, if you know what it feels like to hate, to generally dislike somebody, you know what the other side of that coin is. Mm -hmm. It's a warm embrace. It is, it's immediate contact when you reach out to them for help, for, to ask them of something, whatever. That response time means something so it's like you know what that is yeah so the thing is it's like i think it's she's stubborn but also her brain runs at warp speed and she's trying to understand so it's zero or 100 percent. it's not in between yeah it's like i need this done it's not it's, it's not a whether i should do it or not, it's but I need this right now. Yep. And then she lies. She knows how to lie. Oh, fuck. Like, <laughs> where um, is this? I don't know. Marley did it. And she lies. My girls will <laughs> my girls will lie, but they won't lie about what they're doing. They'll say nothing. Mm-hmm. What'd you do? Nothing. What was that loud noise? Mm-hmm. No. Well, I came in here because I heard a loud noise, and then you said, ouch. Are you hurt? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. That's usually something. You know, so my thing is like, man, like, you realize, like, I'm less upset and may actually help you clean up your mess if you just tell me what the what you did. Like, come on, man, come on. But that's not as easy. It's easier to. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to yell and scream first thing in the morning. Yeah. I'm really not. <laughs> I'm tired. I'm tired. <laughs> what What time does Brick get up? Um. Five or five thirty, and then it depends on if she's going to the office or not. Yeah, if she's going to the office. She's up at four too. But it's like she has to beat me downstairs and get in their shit. Like we have to wake up to what That's, did Ruth do this morning? And I'll say that the difference between. Me being out working at 4.30 in the morning versus 5.30 is huge. The And especially, like, yesterday, it being, like, the first official day that people were back in the office, people were out early. Mm-hmm. I'm not used to seeing and And it's dark longer in the morning. The sun's not up until after 7. And so the fact that I'm out, for two hours before the sun even comes up and there's still traffic 
Like people are, you know, New Year's resolutions. People are trying to start the year off right. And I see it. I can tell in the volume of traffic. I can tell in the speed with which people are moving. People are moving. And so you can see people have that get up early, you know, to start the year. But I don't see that lasting. And the cold doesn't make it any better. Not at all. So what would help you get up early in the morning? I'm not waking up before four. <laughs> you know what I have been doing? I've been, have you ever used sound baths? No. So I need to do, uh, excuse me, I need to do more research and digging on it. But essentially, it's a specialized room to where they surround you with sound bowls and they use tuning forks and they use harmonics to trigger ailments and inflammation in your body and your organs. There's science behind it. I've not, I haven't dived into, dove into it, so I won't pretend to be knowledgeable on it, but I have the Woosier vest. I have that haptic vest that I, I wear that gives me, you know, bass to make me feel like it, it basically just fills in the sound. All of the sonic quality that you lose by only having tiny diameter frames, you know, in your uh, in your ears, you lose a lot of fidelity. So it makes it feel like you're a club. It accentuates movies, video games, all that stuff, right? So I wear it around while I'm cruising, while I'm scooting, and it helps wake me up. Like, I put that thing on. I put on my, one of my playlists and there's a, there's a song called Booty Work by T-Pain and you put this vest on, dog. <laughs> <laughs> Be tired. Listen to this song with this vest on. Not even all the way up. Like, it's just, it pounds. And so, <laughs> it's hard to stay still, let alone to not be awake at, even though it's super early, it's cold, all those things. And um, so it's one of the songs on my playlist that really wakes me up. And so, but I've also been diving into sound baths. So to simulate a room, I put a vest on and I, you know, get myself in a very comfortable position and I just let the vibrations and I put on a playlist. There are playlists all over the place dedicated to ASMR and sound baths. And so I use it to both go to sleep and to wake up because Typically, when I wake up in the morning, it's three thirty. Even if I'm not, even if my body's not moving and it's hard, my mind is racing. Mm -hmm. Whether it's the shit I've got to do, the stuff that I've got coming, bills, whatever it is, right? Like my mind's going, and listening to these playlists helps me not only to mask the craziness that goes on in my mind, but like it helps me to focus when I do have a thought. So like if I showed you, so I'm, I, I said my notes for some reason, the iCloud didn't update. If I showed you the note that I have just from today, it's long as fuck dog. It's long, <laughs> but it's like, if you read it back, you'd be like, Whoa, like I wrote down the rabbit hole. I went down, but it was, it's good. Like everything I spoke on in terms of the, uh, the little side hustle with golf, boom, ironed out something to that, sent it to my guy. And he's like, I got some other fires to put out, whatever he said, but I like where this is headed. So, you know, get the ball rolling with that. That happened at four o'clock in the morning. That's just when the thought came to me. And like I told you, I was like, I'm trying to jot everything down because I lose more good thoughts than I remember. And so, right. Just write them all down and then go back and review them and say, okay, I don't really need to remember that shit. Oh, I'm good. That's good. Oh, that was a good thought. Put it in, you know, move it into another, make it more prominent. I've got to get some kind of workflow down because I'm not on any medication that slows me down. And I don't want anything that slows me down to make me droggy or groggy. Right. And stuff more than likely will. So I don't know, man. Adderall's pretty rad uh, in low doses. Um, Heard good things, but I use cannabis in the same effect. So, um, whether it's 
Man. Yeah, but have you tried speed? <laughs> <laughs> no, sir, I have not. Um, but I know, <laughs> know that caffeine and cannabis has the uh, is a combination that has worked well for me in the past. So um, that plus these sound waves, man. Like this morning, I woke up. My first alarm was at three thirty. I let the other one go until four. If I fall back asleep, I do. If I don't, then I just kind of. Once it goes off at four, I'm up. And so listening to these these sound baths for 30 minutes, 15 minutes before I get up, like my motor, it's like warming your car up. That's what it feels like. It's cold outside. If you turn your car on and then try to put it into gear, it's probably not going to be as responsive. But if you give it 30 seconds and you let it idle past the point of that warm up, and then you hit that and you put it in gear, it's going, right? It's It's ready. And so that's what it feels like to me. It feels like early on that the benefit that I'm getting the most from it is that I'm not as, you know, people like there's that cliche, don't talk to me until I've had my coffee. <laughs> if I have caffeine after that, it's additional. Mm-hmm. I'm, a, I'm already up. I'm already, I'm already ready to go. So, um, and then falling asleep, it's like, my mind won't turn off. And so distracting myself to the point, using vibration, using everything that it's like I woke up to this. So that was the last two days I had woke up for three thirty, then got up at four out in downtown Phoenix, 5 a.m. Today I let it go because the, the demand wasn't there. I'll go back out tomorrow or the next day. And so let it build back up. So I let myself sleep in. Alarm still went up at 3.30. 4 o'clock, it went back off. I fell asleep, and then 4 o'clock, it went off. I turned my alarm off and just let myself wake up because the girls were going to sleep in, quote-unquote, sleep in. And so mm-hmm. I didn't wake back up until 6.45. And my vest was on the whole time. I didn't even know it. But it was just like, like you know, vibration for a toddler. You need to get him to go to sleep. That's what I'm doing. Nice. I'm essentially driving myself nice. around the block. <laughs> <laughs> and between that and cannabis bro like it feels like it's helping so good that's another thing helping with my goals is to reset or to unwind so i can recharge hey, my thing i get home about depending on what's going on and who's driving through town i get home any time in between 10, 30, and 11. Okay. So I come home. I usually go pee. And then I drink some water. And then I brush my teeth and go to bed. So I'm in bed by 11, 15, 11, 30. I am not waking up before 4. <laughs> and then, you know, on... On days when I'm doing diets and nutrition stuff, I'm up till midnight at least on Saturday and Sunday. At least. And then those are my sleeping days because, you know, I'll get up at six. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, you're tired. Like, I'm tired, man. I'm just tired. I'm just fucking tired. Do you, Mine's tired. Do your kids body's nap, tired? Nap schedules? No. <laughs> well, like Christopher does, but the girl, like the girls, won't unless you like force them to. Yes. My eight-year-old done. She hasn't taken a nap in two years. My five-year-old doesn't have the battery. She doesn't have the bandwidth to make it until eight o'clock, but she still doesn't take a nap. So it's like. I can't convince them to take a nap unless they do something like they'll go if they like they went to the zoo uh, during the break and um, you know they got home and they took a nap that afternoon. But that's because they walked around everywhere. But most days there's no getting them to sleep, so you don't even get an opportunity for a little siesta. If Britt is at home. And she takes the 
kids with her to get the big kids from school, which she usually does. I'll get like a 20, 30 minute power nap in. Which is nice. Yeah. But. That's one of my goals is to whatever the European lifestyle that I read about when I was in school to where siestas were part of the norm. Like I'm about that life. <laughs> I'm about, I'm about midday nap life for sure. So one of my goals this year is to be busy is to stay busy, but start my day off at 4 a.m. Work until seven, eight o'clock recharge, refuel, work from nine until noon. Hour nap, 90 minutes. Hell yeah. Start again at two, work until six. Right? So we're like, that's a 10, 12, 14 hour day. But in the middle of it, I'm not only giving myself time and the space to eat well, but I'm also giving my body the opportunity. I Tell my girls, that's the thing that works with them the best. Even when they won't fall asleep but I want them to settle down, I ask them, I say, how how often do you have to charge your tablet? Uh, Every time we're not using it is the right answer, which my oldest will say, but my youngest will, uh. <laughs> I was like, what happens when you don't charge it? It dies. I was like, well, you're not going to die, but you'll get cranky. What happens when you get cranky? Nothing good happens. Yeah, that's the right answer as well. <laughs> so what do you do? Recharge your battery. So just put it in that context, right? I need to recharge. I need to find, force myself to recharge my battery on a daily basis. The sound bath thing feels like it fits right in, dog. If I can't fall asleep in the middle of the day, ohm out. I am going to vibrate out. Like, that sounds weird to say out loud, but like, it feels like, you know, there's a, you know, they're talking about just harmonics and melody. Like, that shit sounds good when it's played the right way. Your body feels better when you're in a meditative state. And sound baths are said to be more effective for people who minds race, like mine. And so it helps you to drown out a lot of the extra busyness that you can't shut off. And so... If I could just shut my brain off for 90 minutes in a day to where the next, and I, you know, I talked about, uh, good driving the speed limit. I was like, it helps me to stay consistent and I'm not getting anxious. I'm not getting overworked through traffic, you know, trying to zoom in and out or, you know, people cut me off, whatever. I don't allow myself to get raged, enraged from what happens on the road. I am cruising the limit that's posted. And then once I get to where I need to be, I've got that extra anxious energy because I've been saving it. Every person who zooms by me and cuts me off, I feel that shit every time. Not a fan. Not a fan of people zooming by me. That sounds positive. At this time of night, what time is it? It is past 9.30. <sighs> who would no. who would rile up the dogs like that? Hooligans. Outside? Basketball playing hooligans. There was a kid that walked by uh let's say about a week and a half ago with his bulldog and was like trying to get his dog to like Snap at our dogs through the fence kind of shit. Cool, bro. But, you know, we're the trashy ones. I had my neighbor across the street this morning. I don't recognize the person, but pulled up in a oversized truck. And gets out has slides on, has sweatpants on that have fallen off his tail end. Um, goes into his house briefly, comes back out, 
He gets back in, climbs back into his truck, and then drives over to the neighbor's uh, recycling bin, throws something in it, and then just keeps going. I was like, <laughs> like he when he got home, he took his can to the side of his house, and then proceeded to not throw that away when he left, but. Uh, I was like, I just watched this dude. I was like, this is hilarious. This is all this watch. It's like, uh, what's it called? What's the movie with um, Jamie Kennedy? Uh, Malibu's Most Wanted. Oh, it's Malibu's Most Wanted, dog. That's what happened to me this morning. It was so great. Made my oh, mind. man. Oh, sorry. You're good. Again, it's Having like, a moment. You're tired. I know. Oh, my back's telling me you oh, suck. Back's reminding me <sighs> who's boss. Yeah. Hey asshole. <laughs> go, take, go take some of that CBD and ibuprofen at the same time. Otherwise, you're not gonna go to sleep. So, you want to call this? Yes, sir. Do it. Yes, sir. I have to go talk. Oh, that's right. You got more waiting for you. Well, good luck with that, sir. God. Anyway, thank you for listening to the Silver Spool podcast, everybody. Happy 2024. Bye. They say teamwork makes the dream work. But what about the nightmare? From your landlord to your dashboard. Sometimes life don't play fair. If you lack time, got a bad spine. We're here to support you, giving peace of mind from the time you buy until we say goodbye. Six zero two three four five zero four seven two buy to buy. Six zero two three four five zero four seven two buy to buy.